Hey everyone, this is uh, Fox Minutes Radio. Uh, Wayne here took a little week break, but now I'm back with a very talented comedian, uh, Ariel Norman. How you doing? Pretty well. I'm actually kind of sick, but are you really sick? I don't know. Last night, you know, when your throat starts hurting, that's how you know. And, yeah. Uh, and then I slept for like nine and a half hours, which is unheard of for me. So. Yeah. Nine and a half. That's good, I guess. Good. Well, like, but is I it clearly, too much sleep? No, it just you? means I clearly needed it because yeah. normally I sleep about seven hours and I'm up and have. And now I'm just like. Ugh. Well, I mean, you just got married and you just got back from Costa Rica. Yeah. Um, well, do you think you got sick there? How long have you been back? Since Saturday. No, it just okay. came on last night. I don't know. Yeah. I've been in a weird place, really, like, psychologically. It's really? Just, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just coming back from... We had, like, the wedding, a long weekend for the wedding, and then we were back in town for a few days just working, doing some comedy, you know... My wife doing her taking care of her farm a little bit, and then she's a farmer. She's a farmer. Nice. And then going for another eight days to Costa Rica. It was the longest time I'd been off stage um, since I started doing comedy. Um, so I think just like coming back and having to get back into the swing of things in terms of work, and also probably just in terms of like getting on stage because it's oh, one of the big things in your first few years as a comedian, especially. It's just like the more you get on stage, the more comfortable you are. And so then being off stage for eight days in a row and then coming back on, there's like, you have to kind of like enter that roller coaster again of um, what it feels like to be on stage in front of all these people and get your sea legs back. Anyway, so I think I, wow. I'm sick because I have to re-enter life. You know, all the stress. Alexa, stop. Oh, yeah, there was music playing. There right was then. music playing. I forgot all about it. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, I got uh, Alexa here. She's great. Is this yeah. your friend, Alexa? Yeah, Alexa, tell us, uh, start your mama jokes. Here's your joke. Yo, mama is so fat. She doesn't need the internet because she's already worldwide. That's pretty funny. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, we got jokes here. You're not the only comedian. Yeah, she's, yeah. You've she's got programmed. Some, some dude at... Amazon headquarters who gets to write little jokes. That's right. That's right. And okay. you can teach her, like, new stuff. But anyways, that's... Uh, Do you teach her jokes? Can you, like, give her jokes to tell other people? Uh, no, it's like you go oh. on to the app and people... Pro I don't know if I was a programmer, if I, you know, programmed oh. a... It would be cool if you could personalize it and be like, Hey, Alexa, I'm going to teach you a joke, and I want you to tell my friend Greg when he comes over. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or just my next friend who comes over. Next no, to Greg. Him. It has to be a Greg. Well, I don't know why Greg is always the friend. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder why. I feel like there are names that are, like, more common for us when we are going to, like, give an example of a name. And for some reason, Greg is, is that your one of those names that people say a lot. Yeah. Do you have, uh, like, a, what, what's a female go-to name? Like, Sally? Sarah? I think it would just have to, like, I'm going to tell my friend Meredith. I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. But wow. she came. Wow. Yeah. Boom. So, how long have you been a comedian, Miss? Did you say Miss? Yes. Did you say, and then, <laughs> yes, and Ariel, I said Miss. <laughs> um, well, I don't really like um, feminizing words, but no, I, what's funny <laughs> okay. about that is that, like, so I really do look preferred, like, gender neutral stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I don't care that much, but. Um, I just don't feel like I'm like, and it's one of those things where someone's going to introduce you on stage. No one ever says, and our next comedian is Mr. John Doe, but they right. often will say our next comedian is Miss Ariel Norman. It's just really? like, don't add, don't <laughs> add gender stuff for women when you're not doing it for men. Um, but I also am like, I, you know, in this world of all these gendery options, I don't, I prefer more gender neutral, more masculine leaning stuff. So, but I was just earlier today, like reading some Tumblr. It's called, it's called Gender Queries, but like Q queries. E -E -E oh, it's very, that's, very that's punny. Clever. Very punny. But all of the all of the options. I was reading a page of like all the options for like the, trying to find gender neutral terms for for mom, dad, wife, husband, niece, nephew, and they're all so horrible sounding. I mean, just dumb, dumb stuff. ZZ is an idea for a for an uncle or a grandfather or something, which is apparently what children call penises in France and so oh. and stuff like that. They've tried to take some Star Trek terms. It's all awful. And, but but the one that I thought was cute was instead of Mister or Miss or Misses, it's Miss, but it's spelled M I S C, like miscellaneous. Oh. So there might be people who are writing like M I S C period Ariel Norman. 
or whatever their name is, you know, and I kind of like that, but it doesn't translate into the spoken word, which is how I spend most of my life for the, as of the last three and a quarter years or something is how long I've been doing comedy to get back to your question. Oh yeah. Good. I'm glad you. Oh, I always remember. I I'm, oh, okay. I just go on to my tangents. I like it. I like it. I do less work that way. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what are we in now? June. Is June? No. May 31st. Correct. So the end of May and I started, uh, my, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, about three and a third years. I don't know when I'm going to stop. Three and a third? Yeah, I don't, nice. you know, I'm a very it. precise person. I don't, in my head anymore, compl- like in the first three years, I think I always pretty much knew exactly where I was. Now I do have to, like, think about it a little bit. But yeah. maybe once I get to, like, five years, I'll stop. I don't know. It's just so, it's just so people ask all the time. Why do you do comedy? That's why, the question. Why do I do comedy? Why, 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 why do you go up on stage and talk about your life? Because I have to. I, it's, I ran away from it for years. Um, yeah. But I've wanted to forever. Even when I was five, my mom told me that I should do comedy. I was ranting about pink and purple hearts and how that's all the other girls cared about in school or in church or whatever when it was like craft time. And the world was our oyster in terms of what we wanted to do with all this construction paper and markers. But... The girls only made pink and purple hearts, and it was I, like I don't know how I get, that can't all just be in our DNA. So I don't know how we were socialized by the time we were five years old to care. You know, where all the girl the boys are playing with dinosaurs and the girls are just making hearts. But I was ranting about that. I was like so upset. My mom, who does not have a good sense of humor at all, she barely has any sense of humor. Um, I was actually making her laugh, which is. is a pretty big Hard achievement and I was five and I was ranting oh. and so she was like suggesting that I be a comedian one day and what's funny about that to me, well a number of things are but I just forgot my train of thought because I'm sick I'm like literally two seconds made your mom time. laugh she said you should be a comedian <sighs> I don't know something about of course that's also like my gender nonconformity, and she oh, would later yes. go on to not want me to be Gay. I, she likes my gender not... I mean, she always was supportive of that. Oh, wait, but, you're gay? <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, yeah. thought a wife was like, wifey, like, oh, no. No, I hate it when people say wifey or hubby. By yeah. the way, stop doing that if you're listening. It's awful. Um, yeah. I don't know. Something about my mom. Maybe it'll come back to me later. I wanted to be a comedian. But then I didn't... Um, then when I, I started, like, really listening to stand-up when I was about 17 um wow. there was something i mean i'd it's a bit late i hadn't really well i was a mormon so i hadn't really oh really yeah i oh. didn't really encounter a lot of culture <laughs> i got something for you hold on a second what did i do with you it got something for me yeah <laughs> is it a book uh, of mormon yes i have one it's definitely a book of mormon mm-hmm. uh my my roommate's mormon as well oh yeah yeah it's fun yeah we're, we're nice sprinkled people, but... we're sprinkled throughout oh, right here. I mean, I'm an ex-Mormon, but is, Ex-Mormon. It, is it El Libro de Mormon or something? Or no, no. no, it's just a good. You just got one right here. I mean, I right yeah, there. you had one three feet away from me. Yeah, you're never that far from a Book of Mormon, really, because they do give these out. No, I've yeah, already, I've yeah. got one. I've oh. been to Mormon church. It's they're very nice people, just not my. Yeah, lady. especially depending. You know, the one in Cambridge, Massachusetts. You ever get a chance? Um, highly recommend that one. Yeah, are you? From us, because I'm from. No, but I lived there for four years. Oh. That's where I started. That's where I really started doing comedy. Oh, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Cambridge. I have my buddy um, uh, Justin P. Drew. He. Uh, I know that name. I think. He's a he's a bigger me, Jew. He's funny. I did see, a sketch comedy. Let me see him. if we're f- uh, friends on Facebook. That's oh. always when when people oh, have comedian world. friends. Yeah. I'm always like I probably because there's so many uh, acquaintances and everything, but let me see. P. Drew. Yeah, he's funny. You should check him out. He does naked comedy sometimes. We are friends the, on uh, Facebook. Yep. At the uh, Boston Improv. I, I did, uh, or in part Boston, sorry. Yeah. I did some sketch comedy with him when I was up in, uh, with his two brothers. It was three Jews and an Irish guy. Three, three Jew Drews? Three Jew Drews? Yeah, yes. Something like that? Yes, that's exactly what it was. And yeah. a bash on. Yeah, and a bash on. Three yeah. Jew Drews and a bash on. That, was mm-hmm. our, that should have been our name. But, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. though it's cool. Um, yeah, I dabbled in stand-up, but I think we did something at Baby A's together. Yes, uh, you were crawling on the ground with your shirt off. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's all. Alcohol is a hell of a drug. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fun, man. I, I, I won $100 enjoyed. that day. You did. You were great. Pretty sure that I 
well, I didn't have to be that good in order to win the $100. <laughs> it was, I mean, we were performing the, for, for a scattered. Ourselves. It was a huge room. It was huge. I didn't know that a baby A's existed with such a huge room. And right. there were maybe, besides this, the handful of comedians and a, and a smaller handful of people involved in the film we were supposed to be raising money for, there were maybe six patrons yeah. uh, in, in scattered throughout this enormous hall. And none of them had come for the comedy. No. They were all sort of semi cajoled into coming into their. It was free, and they were. Yeah. There was an announcement over the PA system, as I recall, being like, hey, patrons of Baby A's who happen to be eating here, if you feel like it, there's a free comedy please, show that's also come. raising money for uh, a, a homeless cause, which. They're shooting that. Turns now. out, okay, but it turns out that, like, we were all told it was, like, for the homeless or something. Turns out it was for a movie. Mm-hmm about homeless people and then, and then I was like oh like a documentary about no it was like it's like a fictional movie that just happens to be about homeless people I'm not sure that the homeless are getting anything and I, in fact they didn't raise any money because I think they paid me more or maybe they made $120 and I got 100 of it but hey you know yeah. their word is their bond <laughs> and they promised $100 I considered I, you know when, the, when when it comes down to it if they do make the feature, because they're just doing proof of concept right now, when they do the feature, and I'm when sure they'll they, make some money. They they get it out there and it starts making money. I'm sure they will donate, but that is a long time. Ago. Yeah, that was yeah, and you know what? That was a learning experience for yeah. them. For sure. I mean, I was supposed to be assistant director there, but I kind of bailed on the project. You got I hope the best for them, and I think yeah. they're doing great. I'm good, love, good. I, I hope so. I sure. hope I didn't yeah. bankrupt their chances. <laughs> We only had a hundred dollars. Damn it! Uh, I was gonna feed us for the next week. <laughs> yeah. No, that was fun though. I just I needed the money. I need the money badly. So there's a lot of comedians who yeah, uh, who maybe would have said, you know what, you guys keep it. I'm sure this is for a good cause. But there's a lot you of us who <laughs> we definitely need. But the you're money. like, no, actually. No, I actually am quite I poor. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite poor. I feel you. I just quit my job, so I'm. I'll be looking for a job a little bit right now. I'm just chilling. Or, yeah. hey, if you can chill. If yeah. you can afford to chill. Oh, it. I can't afford to chill, but no. I, I want to chill. It's like, oh, my bills are paid off, so I don't have to worry about it. Well, anymore. then you can afford to chill for I a minute. Chill. Yeah, just for a minute. For a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably start looking like Friday or something like that. Cool. If you guys know any jobs, don't bring them to me because I don't need your fucking help. I can do it myself. Okay? I could use I'm a part-time gig. Just yeah, to, I'll probably get know. a part-time gig. Because like, I want to yeah. focus more on this, raising yeah, money exactly. for... I'll be doing a couple benefits. Oh, well, one is I want to have artists come chill out and fucking paint this wall right here. Cool. That would be dope. Now I want like five to ten artists chill for the day, drink, we'll time lapse it and get it all there set you go. up. And then I'll be doing a uh, a benefit for uh, the Autistic uh, Film Society. Cool. There's going to be a film festival in November, so in October I'll be going to Taylor, Texas. I'm, I'm going to already talk to the manager of the Howard Theater and doing a 24-hour podcast. If you want any, uh, you know, Asperger's people to tell jokes, that is eighty five percent of the comedy community. That's so. right. Well, no, I definitely want acts too because it's twenty four hours, and yeah. I'm gonna get tired, and I need to eat. Yeah. You know, use the loop. Yeah. So, like, all right, and here's five minutes of uh, Ariel Norman, and sure. I'm gonna go take a shit. Sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we'll probably have bands and any acts would be good, and also just people shooting the shit with me. Yeah, for, hit me up for a little you know? bit for sure. Yeah. There's hundreds It'll of It'll be us. in October, so we have plenty of time. Oh, cool. It'll be announced uh, in the future. And if anybody wants to donate, I'll uh, have a Patreon or, or something set up soon for that. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so that's something that I'll be doing here for Fox Mass Radio. But, cool. Uh, so you're getting back into your stand-up routine? Yep. Um, so do you have, like, multiple? Like, I, I don't know. I forgot. I haven't seen you in a while. I apologize. I've just been busy or broke so um do you have just one set or do you write new stuff every time or do you add to your set that you have or do you scrap your set and start new like some comedians do um so yeah that was a lot of questions so i just trying to get material wise i probably have it's it's hard i haven't like timed it out in a while but i probably have about two and a half hours of material that's not very common for someone who's been doing Mm -hmm. it for a little over three years but i write a lot um, I'm awful with writing. I wish I could write more. That's yeah. My biggest flaw. Well, I it's want to do stand up to me uh, has yeah, comedy books everywhere. Dude. <laughs> 
for underneath the computer and everything. Once I started finally doing comedy, like I said, after I, after I ran away from it for a while, um, which is a complicated story, but I've told that story so many times that I won't really get into it. But no. once I started really doing it, um, it I it immediately became like, yes, this is what I want to do. This is this is it for me. This is my life. This is what I care about. There's no this isn't a hobby. Mm-hmm. It's not something that oh if I if it works out like no this is my this is my calling in life. This is what I love. This is what I want to do, and I'm very good at it. And so it's it's immediately became my it's it's a full time job for me. I mean, I've worked at um, at part time jobs anywhere from nothing because I had a sugar mama when I first started um, to thirty or so hours a week, you know, at, at another job. But yeah. I I spend at least forty, probably more like fifty or sixty hours a week on comedy in one way or another um it could be writing at coffee shops it could be on stage could be um you know doing podcasts and talking but whatever but this is my this is my career and this is my job and so so i do a lot of writing and even when i'm at my part-time jobs my favorite is the the employees who have good senses of humor i i I like to riff with them i like to some of them um are cool with me explicitly being like hey i'm gonna try this joke at it with you or some of them are great listeners and great like um, feedback for i'll just if i'm on i just start going and then i might write some stuff down that's that comes into it so um, have a little support network. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on yeah, it depends on the shift. Some days I walk in and I'm like, oh, that person's too politically correct. That person's not a listener, you know. But other shifts I'm like, yes, so and so is here. Let's let's get to work. Um, you know, you got to get what you can out of whatever your part time job is. Um, but so it's not it's not like this is not necessarily typical for that many comedians. But I. Um, like in a given week, let me use, okay, so uh, I got back from my honeymoon on Saturday and I had a, I was, I had a show that I did, well, I was supposed to do 10 minutes. I wound up doing like 13, but, um, just you get to a point and when you're, and I, and I wasn't even like I was doing that good of a job normally, like I just hadn't been on stage in eight days and I needed to, like I said, get like my sea legs back, but the people who run it like me and and you you can get away with, you know, not really paying attention to the light. I needed to like get to an ending, you know, you got to get to a big laugh. And so I was finding that. But so the material that I did there was um, a lot of jokes that I had written in the couple of weeks maybe before my honeymoon and mm-hmm. wedding, like some newer stuff. Um, one joke that I had was kind of written down, and when I was on the airplane on the way back, I was going through my old notes, and so it was a, a joke that I had never tried before, and so I did it at that show. And another joke did that... Did well? Um, let me try to remember because there were two that were fairly new. The one that I hadn't tried before, it didn't go over that well. I think I needed more narcissists in the audience. It's about how, um, you know, when people win an award or something and then they say they're so humbled by it. Yeah. I mean, and we all roll our eyes about that. For Other sure. people have made jokes before. But I was just trying to express the idea of like, I've never been humbled by like winning something. I've said to myself, like, Ariel, you know, some of these self-congratulatory thoughts are getting a little cocky and unattractive you, you need to remember to act humbled but I've never actually like right. been humbled I was trying to explore that but like I think that the audience is at the institution theater and it's a very like supportive I've never fr- been there. well it's not going to exist for very much longer apparently oh, because <laughs> they they had to sell the condos because their rent know. was it's really awful because it's the cutest little theater where, where is this located um it's on south it's off south congress mm. I was going to say near Opal Divines, but that's also gone. Um, oh. R.I.P. Uh, near Infinite Monkey Wine Theorem. I don't really know the names of a lot of mm. how to describe okay, places. Okay, South Austin, sure. South um, but it was, it's a very... But we'll it's, go check it out if you're around before it goes. Well, yeah. It's, I think yeah. pretty much every Saturday there's a comedy show mm-hmm. at either 8 or t- and or 10. Um, okay. But anyway, and then another joke that I had written on like the weekend of my wedding and then some stuff. So, so I like to mix it up. Um, I have, like I said, material that I've written over the course of the last three and a half years. And so there'll be some nights where I'm doing some jokes that I wrote in my first year, some jokes that I wrote new, some wrote some jokes that I've been telling for a year and okay. a half. I, I like to mix it. I like to but I have sets that flow, um, top, the topics kind of, um, feed into another so that sure. I want it to be conversational. Some, segues, yeah. 
And sometimes I go up without much of a set list at all. I try to go toward that more and more nowadays where, or just not to be tied to the set list. I like to do a lot of crowd work too. So that can take you in new directions nice. or it can remind me of a joke that I've either never tried before or that I used to tell or it can lead into it. How do you, uh, how do you deal with heckling? Have you had like a heckler that destroyed your show that made you, um, uh, I wouldn't say that rethink? destroyed my show. I actually really like, I sometimes really like hecklers. Um, Don't heckle her. And well, in Just fact, saying. no, I have I have a show this Thursday. Actually, tomorrow night, okay. I'm doing a show at the New Movement. It's a show I host, and it's called it's called Off Script, where heckling is allowed and encouraged. Mm. So I have a specific show for that, um, and it's at 9:30 at the New Movement tomorrow. It's Go five dollars. It there's free drinks and there's prizes for the best heckler Woo. of every comic, and we have some great comics coming. So. I, cool. but heckling, I explain first of all to the audience at that show, I say there's like two kinds of heckling, um, two main kinds anyway. There's the first kind where it's, you're just yelling out like you're not funny, you're fat, Woo. you're, you know, racial slur or whatever. Yeah. That's not the kind that we are encouraging, um, yeah. unless it's really funny, but you know, it, you know, anything that's really funny is fine. But the kind of heckling I'm talking about is the kind where a lot of people don't even realize it's heckling or that it's taboo is that, you know, you're up there spouting off your political ideas or whatever. And someone has that impulse to share a thought, especially a lot of times they think that, that it's going to be funny, which mm -hmm. can be annoying. A lot of times they just are just responding naturally what they feel is a natural response. And that's the kind where we're encouraging, like join the conversation. Right. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Now, that is still very taboo at, at most shows. Every now and then, like, so sometimes with heckling, it becomes like judo, right? So they throw this thing at you that maybe would ruin it, but you can often use it again because the audience is so on your side when, when you have a heckler. And they when they know that you're in the moment because you're responding to something that's just happening in real time, Absolutely. it's not some rehearsed thing that you have. And it, maybe it is a trick you have up your sleeve because you've dealt with this situation so many times. But the audience is so on your side when you're present and they know you're present and the other guy's the bad guy. And so it's so easy to get a huge laugh off of a heckler. The problem with heckling is when people ruin your punchlines. Sometimes you're going and you're hitting them and you're getting all these punchlines in, but you're building to your big punchline and then someone heckles right in that moment. That's what really pisses me off, especially at some drunk dude. Yeah. And so the last time I remember that really happening, That's the worst, man. it's so it was at this show. It was for this like queer pub crawl thing um, that me and um, some comedians, Jared McCorkle and Austin Smart, were doing. Shout and it was a really fun show. And um, this guy, who I didn't realize at the time, he, I had actually met him. He was he and his friend were working at a food truck at the Stand Up Empire taping. That's a show that we recorded for PBS uh, about stand up comedy in Austin. Oh, cool! Check and it so, out. Yeah, and so they had seen me. Is that available to watch? It my season is coming out in like a year or something. So oh. I'll, I'll well, stay tuned next know. year. Yeah. Um, but they so we had actually like had we made friends, you know, and mm -hmm. like but I didn't really remember that's who that was. And so now he was this queer pub crawl thing. Um, and he was fun and I'd had fun interacting with him, but he was getting pretty drunk. And so when you get that drunk, you lose the ability to read the social situation and to like most audience members intuitively understand the timing of jokes and stuff. But once people get really drunk, they can like think now they're the star of the show, especially if you've been interacting right. in their mind, they're like, Oh, I'm funny. Straight. Now I'm getting laughs. They don't understand that the comedian is really direct. 98% of the time, the comedian is direct. I any laughter that happens with the heckler, the comedian is still directing and making that happen. Mm -hmm. They're just using you, you know, now. And so, but yeah, he just ruined. And it's like, it's, I really feel it's almost, I mean, this, maybe this is going to sound super pompous, but it's almost like I just felt bad for the audience because they That's like, nice of you. no, I'm going to, I've told these jokes a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. I know how good they are, you know, and, and I'm building to this punchline. And now this guy just took a, a huge amount of laughter away from this group of, you know, 50 or 60 people that are in this room that I know they would have all gotten to have this big release because you're building to this thing. And if that guy ruins it, now I have to be like, dude, shut up. Up. So how do you how do you how do you save it? So like when you're about to get to that big punchline, yeah. he fucks it up. You have to 
sort of right. revamp it? How would you like repeat? Well, your so like and so to most to kinds of heckling, I'm pretty good at because I can be like, you know, pretty witty in the moment and mm-hmm. and just you know kind of either gently make fun of the guy or you know build off of what he's saying mm-hmm. and that can be fine. That kind I'm still not that great at dealing with because. It's very frustrating. Usually if it gets to that point, you've already been dealing with him for a few heckles and, you know, and that, but again, like you want to gently make fun of them because if you ever get mean, the audience doesn't really like that. It's too uncomfortable. I mean, if you're really mean and you go over the top, get him funny, from, that can be good. Yeah. I mean, but look it, at, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kramer from. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You got, a little, really you got a little mad. But so, so yeah, you you can be mean if as long as you're being witty. But but I like so when that happened, I lost my patience with him. Um, after like when it was at the real denouement of the joke, I was mm. just like, dude, you're you know. And he had just broken a glass, and it was like oh. one of these kinds of things. And so you didn't kick him out. No, like, I mean, and get he rid wasn't. Of this peasant, please. He meant well, you know. And you, we're we are only making money because we're selling drinks. You know right. that is how this works. And I don't, you know, I don't really like to. I I don't want to kick people out until it is the last resort. And right. and the show was almost over. You know okay. that was gonna be my closer. And now I had to be like, and and that's the thing. It was just like, okay, well, I'll just tell another joke. It's fine. I'll tell another joke and it'll be good. But it would have been this big great ending to what had been a killer set you know um so i don't know i think i still need to figure out a a good way to deal with and maybe the key would have been to shut him down a little bit harder earlier on instead of like knowing realizing that a guy is is getting drunker and that if you don't kind of like it's it's like with people with their dogs who they spoil their dogs and all of a sudden they're like I don't know I just can't control or their children I just can't control them that's just how they are it's like with a person you have to like kind of yeah be a little bit more for- forceful sure. like you know but I do like having fun with hecklers but once they're getting drunk I need I think I need to recognize earlier on like okay sir <laughs> like we just had fun but I need you to be quiet for the rest of the show because I'm about to tell a joke and I know you're going to think that you have something funny to say, but I guarantee you you're going to ruin my punchline. I think I might just try saying that to them next time. Like, you know, in a way where you're like, I'm not, I was, I don't want to be mean. I don't like that version of me. Um, and so I think I just want to, you know, just be direct like, hey, dude, or, you know, say to his friend, like, hey, make sure you keep your little, I always keep wanting to say you little gay. He was a gay guy. It's not necessarily pertinent, but you know how like gay guys can be like, oh, I'm fun, you know. Uh, And it's like, yeah, let the lesbian talk for a minute, okay? I guarantee (laughs) you, my punchline's gonna be better than yours. Anyway, my little rivalry with gay men. I was at uh, Applebee's the other day. Why? uh, Oh, it was like we just wrapped uh, Death Mention and everything else was closed on Memorial Day, so we went to Applebee's. And Applebee's is the best we're talking about. I don't know. I haven't. I want that Applebee's money, baby. There was something I saw. There's something I heard about some something they had on their menu that did sound intriguing recently. Yeah. Do you know? Was there anything? Oriental chicken. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> the Oriental chicken salad. <laughs> um, no, Have you heard Margaret Cho's bit about that? I was, I was about that? on this uh, this uh, uh, bartender. She was really cute. She reminded me of one of my ex girlfriends, and she was like flirting back, flirting back. She said something, and she's like, oh, no, that, there's my boyfriend right there. I'm like, you go, girlfriend. Like, I just, <laughs> you just went gay? Yeah, just went to gay. To avoid the rejection. Oh, yeah, exactly. Implicit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how you do it. That's so funny. Yeah. That's not a good impulse. <laughs> just just. Well, I mean, I mean, no, was, I mean, she knew I was joking around. Oh, okay. And then she came back. We started flirting again. But because, like, after that, she left. Back, went back. And then she, all of a sudden, she goes, hey, I'm single now. And I was like, get over here. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, okay. that's fine. But uh, anyways, yeah. If you don't want to get rejected, just... BBA. Pretend you're gay Just or straight, gay. depending on yeah, yeah. what you are. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see the the reverse. Or the, asexual. The gay Just man uh, pretend he's straight. Yeah. To, so he doesn't get rejected Shoot by up. some dude. Or a girl, either. Oh, he, yeah. yeah, this whole time he was just doing a very homophobic impersonation <laughs> of a gay person. <laughs> Um, so, do you have like a favorite venue um, in Austin or in the country? Austin. Yeah, let's keep it in Austin. We'll keep it in Austin. Well, um, ew, it's, you know what? I don't really like to choose. Um, Our top three. I do love the new movement where I, I have my too. show, so and intimate. it is it's intimate without yeah. like, because Cold Town can sometimes. I love Cold Town, but it can almost be too intimate. It's a it's a little smaller. Yeah. Um, and it just. 
it's that was my first stand up yeah so a new movement especially with the renovation that they did a year and a half ago I don't know how long it's been um, it's a little bit bigger now not but it's still not too big yeah. but you can it's a it's a good size for like you I know like fool around like uh, the curtains and stuff in the back and you can yeah, yeah there's some out. stuff they just too. they just put up a new very cute little just yesterday was the first time I'd seen it oh. um, so it has to be within a week or two um, it's like a wood back it could just be that there's one sketch show that that's huh. for it might I don't want to guarantee okay. anything um, don't get my hopes up I mean Cap City uh, is awesome I, yeah. the small and the big room I've actually never been there Oh, that's crazy. You should yeah, go. I know. Yeah. You really should go. And if you <laughs> just put in the time to like go to the Cap City um, stand-up open mic on Sundays a few times, mm-hmm. then um, you can go for free to see comedy shows on the weekends, at least when it's not sold out. You just have to go to the front and say that you're a, a comic, and then they'll give you a little ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, you, uh, I don't know if you shows. should be taking that spot away from, no. from serious comedians. No, I'm serious. I'm serious about seeing other comedians yeah I mean you'll sit in the back and everything but that way there's no two item minimum and everything if it I mean I don't want anyone to take advantage of that that's not cool but like anybody who who, if you do want to do stand up comedy know that one of the benefits of I like doing it I just get nervous as fuck and then I you know I don't really write anything yeah you really shouldn't do it unless like you really really want to it's a lot for your life I do like it yeah I do like it but it's not it's probably like one of like one of three several in my hobbies. hobby list, yeah. you know. There's, yeah. there's a couple of. I mean, this is a hobby. This is priority number one for me. Mm-hmm. You know, but this I can. You know, I make people laugh on the show. I think. I hope. You know, if not, then, is there a is there a way to know? Are people? In, oh yeah, we got a couple people watching. What's what's going on? Do they say anything? Uh, sh- Cap City's hiring staff right now. Says Charlie Hayes. Oh um, cool. Yeah. That's another way. Sh- that way you'll yeah, yeah. definitely see a lot of comedy. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, I should check it out. I love the Velveeta room. Oh, me too. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to choose between all these venues. It was hard for me to get into the Velveeta room. I did that. Uh, I did a few in 2012. You did the signing up for the Thursday open mic. Yeah, yeah. Was um, a yeah. Well, if he doesn't know your name, then yeah. he'll put you on eventually on a three-minute spot, uh-huh. and then if you do well enough. Um, he'll put you on again. Sometimes he puts people on a three a couple of times, but if you if you are trying new material and you have some promise and you're working, he will at least start filtering you into some uh, four-minute spots. But, I mean, there's a lot of comics in this town and a lot of people who, I mean, if I sign up, I mean, I've never not been put on, at least since the first month that I moved here, because he sees that I'm a serious a uh, comic who is always writing new material. You yeah. know, he likes me. Well, he and put so, me on like three consecutive weeks. That was great. There you go. But, uh, and then I kind of dropped out. And then you don't know. Well, yeah. that's yeah. your problem. Yeah, yeah. But again, there's so many really, especially now, mm-hmm. I mean, because the scene continues to grow, there's so many really serious comics that you're vying for, yeah. you know, one of not, I mean, what, 20 or so spots. Um, so, yeah, he can't put everybody on. Every time. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, I only sign up uh, usually like once a month is all I have time for because of other right. shows and trying to have a life with my wife and everything. Um, so I don't, you know, I think most people that he does put on every time they ask might not be signing up every single week. So I don't know. It's a whole. I mean, yeah. There's twenty. Com- there's there's at least. 120 very bookable comics very bookable comics in this town and there's hundreds of people who are going to lots of open mics if nothing else yeah. so so what's your schedule like uh this week besides uh tomorrow new movement uh well so right? tomorrow at eight o'clock at new yeah. movement there's also um a, it's like a booked open mic called the coven where they are it's um a monthly show that's happening huh. where it's all it's an all female um performing open mic oh wow um yeah and then after that at, at 9 30 is my show with heckling and then friday night i'm doing the live at cold town show so that's at 10 o'clock at cold town um i'll actually be the featured performer that's a new thing that Ooh. they're doing where because it used to be i like 12 or 14 comics all doing like six minutes What's but now feature? how long is the feature set oh 10 minutes or fi- no 15 minutes cool um yeah so with that um and we have a lot of several out of town comics coming in too so um yeah that'll be fun and 
I don't remember past that. Okay. <laughs> Saturday. Wait, awesome. hold on. Let me look. Let me look. Well, I was going to be doing a show in San Marcos tonight, but apparently it got canceled. No. But I kind of am happy with that. Yeah. Oh, is there a huge comedy scene in San Marcos? Um, there's a fairly big one in San Marcos and San Antonio. Um, mm-hmm. They've been going for some years, and then um, because of the Austin, you know, as, as Austin grows, uh, they grow as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like doing comedy in San Antonio and San Marcos both. You know, sometimes I like to mix it up. I like to, yeah. I like, you know, I'm trying to go to Houston and Dallas more often too. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, have you been outside of Texas doing comedy besides uh, Mass? Besides Boston? Yeah, yeah. I've gone to Seattle a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I really like Seattle. Yeah. Uh, I've gone to New Orleans a couple of times. In fact, my uh, my wife and I, um, we traveled last uh, September and October. We traveled for six weeks together around the southeast of the country uh-huh. um, in our CRV. Uh, so she was volunteering at farms, and I was doing comedy shows. And oh, so, cool. yeah, we called it the Soil Yourself comedy and farming tour <laughs> um so yeah we went like all that. over the southeast you know in so th- through dallas and little rock and memphis and nashville and knoxville and chattanooga and birmingham and florida and mississippi and missouri and louisiana you know all the southeast and it was a lot a lot of fun and i i learned a lot and grew a lot from that it was awesome um i've also been in, in durham north carolina once doing comedy um I technically started in Orlando, did a couple of open mics before I moved to New York, mm-hmm. done some comedy in New York a few times. Um, is that everything? Is that everything? I forget. You've been out of state, uh, out of country, really? Uh, no, yeah. no. I mean, that's a whole different thing. Like, did I would have to any, be invited uh, stand to. stand up in Costa Rica? Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if my, my Spanish is good enough to, but I made some people laugh. I definitely made nice. some people laugh, which I count. Mm-hmm. I always do like that announcer voice in Spanish to make people laugh like, Ooh. Hola, mi amo Wayne. Yeah. You too? Gracias. Yeah. Gracias. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, is that everywhere that I've done the comedy? It feels like it, feels like it should be longer. Um, well, I mean, you've only been doing it for three years yeah. and a third. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm planning on going to Denver in August uh-huh. and... Um, L.A. in October. Those Ooh. are the next two mm-hmm. trips. So, yeah. That's perfect. So, mm-hmm. um, what is, like, the longest uh, set that you've had? I mean, you talk about, like, 15-minute set. The longest one I've done is 45. Oh, I've done. Cool. You can do a clean 45? I would, can do a tight 45. A clean? No. I no. don't do. Oh, I, can, I, do I can do no a clean 20, jokes? probably. Hmm? <laughs> clean 20. Yeah. And I like to do. I mean, I could... Uh, I really like crowd work a lot, and and yeah. so I and I do what I you know, kind of a directed crowd work. I don't really like to go. And I used to have so when I, I used to do my show weekly at the Hideout Theater, um, and it would be one week I uh, I would do the heckling show that I do now monthly. But but I also used to do a riffing one, and then I also used to do one that was crowd all crowd work. And I would and, and a lot of this is like I I want to I I mean I got so much out of it for myself, but also for the other comics in the scene or for the ones who would visit. Um, I, w- I wanted to give them skills and I wanted to show these other, co- some of the comics who'd been doing it longer than I have, who are better in some ways, who whatever, but like, but who don't have a lot of these crowd work heckling kind of skills. I wanted to, to help them because for a lot of people, they think the crowd work means you go, Hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, what do you do for a living? Or where are you from? And right. you don't have to ask those questions. You can go, Hey, what's the longest you've ever had a tampon in for? You know, and start from a place of that, you know. Zero minutes for me. What's the weirdest thing you've ever fucked yourself with, you know? Um, and, and if you do questions that are, like, in the subject area of jokes that you have, it's easy to, like, be able to use your, your lines on them or to, or to let it naturally segue into a bit that you already have. But then the audience is ever more involved. But also, I mean, you have to trust yourself to be witty and to be able to respond to whatever people say. But you can go through so much time, you know. And if you do need to be clean, for instance, or you need to, if you're doing some gig where you need to, to talk about whatever charity cause is involved or whatever, go into the crowd. Ask them questions because... Like I said, when the audience knows that you're present and they know that you are making the stuff up as you go along, they're much more invested and you get easier laughs. And so you can um, just start talking to the audience. You can build, You can spend a lot of time 
uh, you know, just working on whatever they're giving to you. So, yeah. yeah. So who's your biggest influence in comedy? Male and female. My big, oh, like to one of each, I get to choose. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when I was listening, when I was 17, like I said, I started like really finding comedy. Um, probably Bill Hicks was the, the first really okay. big. I mean, at the time, it was like Bill Hicks, George Carlin, yeah, um, George. Chris Rock were probably mm-hmm. the three that I with. But I listened to a lot of Jeff Foxworthy, all the blue collar guys. Really? I love Ron White. Um, Ron White, I think, is the only one that has survived. Well, I mean, no, the world. others all have huge audiences and fan bases. But in yeah, terms but of, he like, was, he was definitely much the more hip relatable people, for me. the intelligentsia, the liberals, whatever are, you know. Um, yeah, they don't give a, a lot of credit to Bill Ingvall and, and Larry the Cable Guy and Jeff Foxworthy. But yeah. they are all, they all have a lot of skills. And Jeff Foxworthy is a great storyteller. I like, I, Jeff. I like Jeff. I'm not a big fan of Bill or uh, Larry. I, you know, and they all made me laugh. I don't know if I went back and listened to them now how much I would really enjoy it. But at the time, you know, as a 17-year-old Mormon, um, it, I, I had a lot to get out of yeah. out of those guys. And um, and George Carlin was just, you know, it was very challenging for me. And that was thrilling. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, because as a Mormon, Still, I mean, and all... Peace, George. Yeah, sure. and all of his, you know, he it was very thought-provoking. And so that was something for me where, I mean, that was a huge... I mean, I'm sure life changing. Same thing with Bill Hicks and Chris Rock. I mean, like those. So those three were my earliest. And then um, I didn't discover Ellen until I was, I think, oh, yeah. 19, something like that. Mm-hmm. But once I did, I mean, no, that's not true. I, I maybe kind of. I'm not sure when I find. So here and now was the first stand-up special of hers that I saw. And anybody who is listening who has only like seen her show and has never seen her HBO specials. Do yourself a favor. Here and now, I think it's it's so good, and I, like all of her specials are awesome. But um, so once I discovered Ellen, I mean, a, a huge influence, and you can still see it in some of my, especially like my facial expressions or mannerisms mm-hmm. on stage. Um, someone, a comic friend of mine, described me as the Wario version of Ellen once, which was like my favorite. The, what? the Wario version of Ellen, <laughs> which is that's great. Um, cause it, like Ellen, Mario Brothers Warrior. Yeah, okay, because Ellen sure. is Didn't Ellen was always has always been so clean. Um, yeah, and she had to be, and that's the thing. She really paved the way for me because she had to. I mean, it was not okay for her to be a lesbian, and so even yeah. with her being as clean as she was, I remember a friend of mine who was in the closet. She was another Mormon, um, and she had moved. To, to my church like right when I was 18 or something so I kind of and I knew she was lesbian she wouldn't even come out to me because her parents were so anti-gay and in yeah. fact she she came out to them like a year or so later or like they figured it out they found out because of MySpace and then a year or so MySpace. and then so they had her like on lockdown and then she finally left like she's disowned oh, she's no. really yeah yeah but so before That's she sad. before she came out to them like fucking 17 well, and this was like 2014, but still. still. Um, Three years she one time called me from like a payphone and had 30 seconds to like tell me what was going on. Anyway, um, so, but her mom had said to me, you know, before she ever came out or any of that stuff, um, her mom said something to me about like Ellen came up. And she said something about her stand-up being so dirty or something. And I, I was like, "You made that up in your head because you know that she's a lesbian." Because she and that, but that's how clean Ellen had to be. She had to overcome just the idea that people had that because she was a lesbian, she must be talking about lesbian sex or something. So she was so clean and so funny. I mean, she was just so like the, her timing, her just the nuances of the ways that she would say things. I mean, it was so good. The callbacks. So a huge influence on me. But, you know, yeah. now I can be super dirty. I can ask people how long they've had a tampon in for, you know. Right. Um, which a very George Carlin Still, once influence. once again, zero minutes for me. You what? Zero minutes of Well, tampon. you know, try the vodka. Don't think. It's actually very dangerous. Is it? Yeah, the, especially through your butt because you absorb alcohol or drugs very quickly. I thought you just quickly. tip upside down and just get a little nip, nip in there. No, what, so that what they were, the kids were doing was um, soaking tampon. Doing. Yeah, I didn't, you know. the young, the, Yeah, the kids were doing <laughs> this. This was the thing. These fucking millennials. They were soaking tampons in vodka and then either putting them in their vaginas or their butts. I think vagina is even more dangerous. I think you absorb even yeah. more through the mucous membranes there. Um, but either way, it's very dangerous it's, because you absorb it more than you would drinking it. So they were trying yeah, to do I a one-to-one. That. Yeah. 
Um, and a lot of people, some people were dying and what? a lot of people were going to the hospital and stuff. Is, yeah. Would that be like, what is that thing? Uh, the shock thing? The T S? No, this is different. Toxic oh, shock okay. syndrome. Yeah. That's just like some people are supposedly allergic to tampons basically, but they, oh. they used to make tampons. Um, they used to make them out of like there were different chemicals or ingredient materials involved. Mm-hmm. And so they changed them after some people died. They changed them in like the eighties or something. Yeah. They're much safer now. It's, it's almost unheard of for someone to get toxic shock That's syndrome good. anymore. Um, and so it's really this whole thing. I talk about this on stage. I have jokes about it, but nice. uh, I'm, just to be serious, you don't need to change your tampon every eight hours. You probably don't. Do you I sleep mean, with it? How, I do how, all the time. How long? Longest? No, that's yeah. how long have I ever had a tampon in for? Yeah, how long have you had the longest the Longest, tampon longest stuff? maybe. Like, I really don't like to go above 24 hours. On the yeah. latter days, when there's, like, if my period is only heavy on the first or second day, oh, who cares? Oh, no, no, I just. You know, no, I just mean, like, fuck you to any guys who are like, or girls. Every now and then I get a girl who's upset about it. Um, but people need to talk about this. I want to know. That's why I asked. So the first couple of days are heavy, but, like, the la- I, I'll have the last four or five days of my period that is so light. And I yeah. just, like, I'm too lazy to be changing tampons that often. It's so annoying. I could have, a, a like, the smallest tampons that they make. I could have one of those in there for 24 hours and not have any problems. And so it's just, like... It's just a waste. First of all, it's very wasteful. We shouldn't even be using tampons. We should probably be using the Diva cups or whatever. That's another story. Um, so, but what I say, and I say this on stage, but it's just like, I, I'm sure I've gone to 28 or something, but the problem is the smell at 24 hours. It's not that you're going to hurt yourself or that it'll leak, but the smell at 24 hours when they come out is like, you know the smell uh, when like a squirrel has been dead in the walls for a couple of weeks? It's or just very... like really bad broccoli farts or something. So you got to kind of like take a deep okay. breath, take it out, roll it in a bunch of toilet paper, get it in the bottom, consider just taking the trash can out okay. right away. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is so. Made my eyes water. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I get it. But you don't need to change it every eight hours. I mean, that's don't insane. Do I mean, oh, and yeah. so many women will lie to me, like in the audience, they'll lie to me and say that, oh, they always change it out every eight, eight hours. Someone told me four hours. I'm like, so wait. What? You're, ch- are you saying to me that you are about to go to bed, let's say it's 11 o'clock, and you change your tampon right then, and then you wake up at 3 a.m., change your tampon, wake up at 7 a.m., change your tampon. Even if you're saying eight hours, you're really that fastidious about it that you're going to, like, set your alarm. You're going to change it right before and right... I don't know. Maybe there are women who are that, you know, OCD about it. But I, uh, you're probably not going to hurt yourself. Ch- test out test out nine hours. See how that goes. That's a really fun thing that I'll do on stage is, is like, so I, I'll tell a whole joke about it and get it, the subject going. And then when I'll, I'll ask a woman, like, what's the longest she's ever had it in for? And so let's say she says 10 hours. Then I'll be like, all right, 10 hours. Can I see it in 11 hours? 11 hours. Can I get a 12? Get a 12? Oh, <laughs> it's that's really cute. Though. It's cute. So females get a bad rap for comedy. They say female comedians, they're not that funny. Yeah, I've heard people who look like you say that. Yeah. Look like me? What are you talking about? I'm just saying. Like, I, a, like a douchey straight. What? I would, if you can. Just with it. You know. All right. That's all we have time for. <laughs> um, what, what do you think about that and why do you think they say that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that's been said. Um, and and some, some reasons are better than others, mm-hmm. obviously, but... I mean, I- anything that has been a man's game, it's, of course it's always hard because we're somewhere in the transition from the old school oh, um, where there were a lot of r- very real barriers, culture was so different, women were being raised. And so as our, you know, our feminism and everything, our modernity takes us into, we're only still in the middle of the process of seeing the full realization of women's potential because of still ways that people are socialized, still old boys networks and everything. So all that being said, um, I think typically if I, let's say I go to an open mic. Yeah. Um, if a woman gets on stage versus a man, I would say there is like a 35% better chance that that woman will be funny than a man. Partly because there, there is the whole barrier to it. Like if you're a woman, because it is kind of harder, um, usually when women do it, they're, they're more motivated to do it. They right. really want to be there. Um, guys have an overconfidence issue. You know, I like to say y'all are all 60% more confident than you deserve. And so women, you know, there's something in that lean in book. You what? I'm the best. Yeah. Um, so, so 
there's something in that lean in book where uh, she says, you know, men, they've studied this and like men will apply for a job when they are only 60% qualified for it. Women don't apply for jobs typically until they're 110% qualified for it. And so the same is really true. The same applies to getting on stage, doing comedy women. And, and I would, I mean, I was always very overprepared, especially in the beginning, but um, women put more work into it. You know, they like to go more prepared to be on stage. They will do it when they, uh, you know, not that there aren't some unfunny women, but um, that tends to be true. Guys, you know, there are more of these guys who are getting drunk and being like, oh, I could do stand up, uh, and uh, or I'll just go riff. You know, that's me. There's not a lot of For these. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of these girls. There was a guy at Cap City a few weeks ago who got up on there, and he was just like, all right, guys, I'm just going to riff on whatever topics you give me. And people were calling stuff out. And he had nothing. He was not funny. I mean, it was funny to laugh at him eventually, but he had nothing good to say about any of these things. And and sometimes, you know, someone called out euthanasia, and he goes, um, I'm for it. Bam. Nailed it. Next. And he really, like, seemed... Yeah, it was, And it was just a shit show, and I was like... I've never seen a woman do something like that. I've seen several versions of guys get up on stage and do annoying, douchey, obnoxious, just entitled, like, I don't know if entitled is quite the right word, but the, the idea that, like, you, you that, that's what I mean. 60% and some men are 80% more confident than they deserve. Right. Um, but, but, so that's something you don't see from women. So that, uh, that's my caveat to what I'm also about to say. Okay. Women, <laughs> I do think that, and my... My wife gets upset, with, got upset with me when I expressed this to her. But I do think that there's a certain masculinity involved in stand-up. Mm-hmm. Um, now, there are women, so, you know, the whole gender thing, like, the sex differences that there are, and again, we don't know, we can't always tease apart what's genetic versus socialization, it's changeable. Sure. But with anything that is a real sex difference, it's always one of those charts, I can't remember the name for this, where you've got, like, you know, women and men, or men and women, where... Um, there is a lot of overlap and some, some things there's more overlap than others, but the differences are on the average and on the extremes. And so I think on the average, um, there is a certain element of masculinity that's involved in good standup. I can see that. There's, it's a confidence. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, take strong positions and, and own them. Um, it's, you know, an assertiveness. There's. Now, there can be very feminine, funny stand-up, but most of what people really love, you know, George Carlin, Bill Hicks, Louis C.K., Kurt Metzger, you know, Bill uh, Burr, um, Jim Jeffries, you know, so many, like, if people give their list of stand-ups, again, a lot of the best ones are going to be men. There's going to be some women, and again, some of that's because of cultural history stuff, but we love we love these strong opinions. We love people coming out and saying the stuff that maybe we've thought but haven't fully articulated, what we've thought but haven't been sure enough of ourselves to articulate. Um, and I love that kind of stuff. I mean, that's yeah. my, like, as much as I love Maria Bamford and Tig Notaro, um, I don't, I'm not as interested in being, not that what they're doing is necessarily that feminine, but it's less, let me go up and give my opinion. Right. You know, and I want to go up and give my opinion. Now, I do think that what is so part of why Louis C.K. is as successful and as mass appealing as he is, while at the same time, you know, someone with that much mass appeal, it's while at the same writer. time, the cred, mm. the, the comics, he's a comics comic and a people's comic. I think a part of it, I realized the other day, is because there is a femininity to what he does as well For as a sure. huge amount of masculinity. Yeah, yeah. Very, the, he's Just very vulnerable, awkward, uh, um, awkward, and very like willing to explore parts of himself. And so I think that that's probably, and I I would like to think that's a strength that I have is that I have a huge amount of masculinity and femininity. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it's makes it so when you can relate to everybody, you know, across the political spectrum, as well as the gender spectrum, uh, I think that's, it's hugely not only successful, but valuable um, in the cultural conversation. And so, you know, I, you know, there is a part of me that does think that men are funnier than women, on average. Boom. That's all I wanted to hear. I, okay. There's a part of me, and again, some yeah, of that yeah. socialization, mm-hmm. whatever, we don't, we, we don't know yet. But, I mean, and part of that's my taste as well, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's another big part of it is that, like, y- you know, the people who have made a lot of the decisions for a long time, the taste makers and everything, have also been men more more often and so that's you know what 
gets seen more. You got some good female comics coming up. You got Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes has been around for a while. Yeah. You got uh, Whitney Cummings, Natasha She's okay. I love Natasha Leggero. I think she does it very love elegant. Her. She's but, very confident. And I, and so that, she I has argue, a lot of femininity. I, right? Yes, but I argue there's a lot of masculinity to Amy Schumer, Natasha Leggero, and Wanda Absolutely. Sykes as well. Now, well, Wanda Sykes... Amy Schumer, I can see. Right Wanda Sykes is a lesbian, for one. Um, and she, yeah. You know, but she, she's, great. she's got a lot of masculinity, Who's too. She's an Asian girl, I forgot. She's been around for a while, too. Margaret Cho? Yes. Um, she's great. Yeah, and there's also that, yeah. the one who did the Pride Dance special. Now I'm blanking on her name. Yeah. Um, that's annoying. Um, yeah. What, what special was it? The, she, oh, wait. Oh, it almost came to me. You can ask Alexa if you get stumped. Well, yeah, so she recently had a Netflix special that where she was, um, like, eight months pregnant or something. Oh. Uh, she's this short... I don't she remember knew what she, she been around for Well, she, you wouldn't have heard of her until this special came out. Oh, okay. um, she's kind of... Ali Wong. Allie. She's kind of... Um, yeah, gotten much bigger in the past year or so. Mm. Um, but she's been... I've been seeing her on festivals and stuff. Yeah. Um, she was at Moon Tower, I believe. I didn't see her there, though. Um... Yeah, so I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like, so I I argue that there is a masculinity to a lot of these. Um, a, a lot of these. I don't think best it's much of an argument. I think you're pretty well, pretty accurate. But there. but some people would say that like maybe I'm seeing we're seeing those things as masculine, but they're not necessarily masculine qualities. But I don't know. This gender stuff gets so complicated and confusing. So. Yeah. Out of those comedians I listed, which which is like your least favorite? Of which which ones did you list? Uh, the, of the women? Yeah. Yes. No. Give me a list of all the female comedians that you can think of, and then I'll tell you who's my okay, favorite. Okay, so uh, let's go Wanda Sykes, uh, Amy Schumer, uh, Whitney Cummings, Natasha Leggero. Uh, Leggero. Natasha Leggero. Sorry, it's I always okay. fuck up her last name. It's just me. I did for a long time. Yeah. Think, but I'm um, a huge fan of hers. So. Yeah, she's great. Um, so obviously she's one of your favorites. Um, uh, Margaret. Uh, fuck. Margaret Cho. Cho. I was going to say Chang, but that's racist. Um... Yeah, out of those five. Whitney Cummings. I don't really care for her that really? much. Really? Yeah. Why? Sorry, Whitney. Uh, I just don't really like her. I don't think she's very intelligent. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, not, she might be of average intelligence, but I don't find her jokes to, like, to give me anything new. I'm not, I'm not challenged by anything. I'm not surprised, you know, like, it's just, it just seems like over the plate. Men are like this. Women are like that. Mm-hmm. Um, ha, 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 sex. Like, with Amy Schumer, I she's she's, she, one I, of the ones she's I raunchy say. enough that I'm learning stuff. Like and yeah. even the latest special, a lot of people criticized it. Um, the cum shelf, I'd never heard of that before. I'd never thought about. There's so much about male and yeah. female sexuality that I yeah. don't know, and I need someone to be that direct about it because I don't. I'm not gonna know what sex for y'all is like. I'd have to imagine it at all, you know, right. or else ask people. And so I learn a lot from Amy Schumer, um, you know, and she's funny and blunt and whatever. Whitney Cummings, I just feel like. She's like when people say women aren't funny, I think of someone like Eliza Schlesinger or Whitney Cummings. Oh God, I hope they never listen to this. Um, but I just get them on the it's podcast. not very yeah, it's you. not very have them argue themselves. I mean, they're for other people though, mm. you know it's just it's I don't get anything out of it that I've never heard before. It feels very just rehashing what stuff do you think that's about already been Lisa Lamp and Ellie. Awesome I insult like her. comic, right? Yeah, I don't she's see her very often. But yeah, well, know, she's she was big like in the early 2000s. Yeah, and I've seen some of her stand up. Uh, yeah, she's funny, yeah. and her insult stuff's good. I like all that insult stuff. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. yeah, Jeff Ross is awesome with that. I really liked his show that he had. So. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him. Do you, you don't do any insult comedy, right? Not really. There's a show um, that happens um, a couple like so some months of the year here where, and it's I think it's the first. When it happens, it's the first Thursday at 11 o'clock at the Velveeta Room. Okay. Um, it's, so it's right after the open mic, but it's yeah. called Spike Club. And it's hosted by Pat Dean and John Rabin. And they will have yeah, two yeah. two comics on who roast each other. And then they turn it out and just like roast, start roasting people in the Austin comedy scene. It's very fun. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. shows to go to. But, um, I, and I have, I've started, like, I have a note file with some potential... Things and but they're the problem is a lot of them are too are going to be too below the belt like they're too real, yeah. and I need to be like better. You have to be like 
good enough friends with people in order to say those things. And I think as because I've lived here for you know almost two and a half years now, okay. I think uh, the longer I um, am here and know these people, like I'm getting closer with the ones who stick around. I mean, the long you know like. The ones of us who have been, as, as people weed themselves out and stuff, those of us who, or move away, those of us who stay and are good, you know, I'm, I'm getting closer with people. And so there could be a time when I do Spike Club and I'm able to roast people. I, I, like I said, I write them, but too many of them are just not, I mean, they're funny, but it's it's going to be pretty mean. So I don't I don't feel comfortable enough. Yeah. There's only a few people in the scene I would feel comfortable enough roasting like that. Well, let's talk about that scene cuz I'm with the mainly the film community and we're a tight crew. Everyone kind of knows everybody and we kind of help each other mm-hmm. out. Is that the same way in the comedic community cuz I feel like uh, when I was briefly in there there was a lot of people that were overly critical and uh, kind of conniving in a way. And I, it might have changed. Um, I just want to get uh, a, you know, a professional opinion on how you feel about I think as it's, a group connected or disconnected. The community has been getting more supportive over the years. Yeah. And some wants, people think it's you know, too supportive now. Really? Um, See, those are the people I don't like. I think everyone should. Well, there's a fine line. I mean, it's. It's, it's I think if, if Yeah, it's competitive mm-hmm. inherently. I think if you want to cultivate talent and skill the best there may be a line somewhere between if you're not supportive enough there might be people who quit too early who shouldn't have um and then if you're too supportive there may be people who not only don't quit because is it that big of a deal if they don't quit but who um aren't like so there are some shows that might happen that shouldn't be happening because not only are you maybe taking away some potential audience for better shows, but also I don't want people going to shows in, in Austin. Like, oh, people people have been telling them, oh, hey, Austin Comedy is so great. It's been, it's been really exploding. You should come check it out. And if they go to one of the handful of shows that is not run well, it's, that's run by a newer comic or an untalented comic and who doesn't know what they're doing, blah, 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 and then they're like, oh, this is the Austin comedy scene I've been hearing so much about, huh? Okay, and they'll never come again. I don't want that to happen. And so when you're seen as too supportive, there can be some of that where we're not telling people enough, like, dude, that you're not funny. You know, dude, this show sucks, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But, so apparently that used to happen more, like at the Velveeta Room, people used to heckle, the comics used to heckle each other. um, And that does not happen anymore. And so, yeah, but I mean, in terms of supportive or not, I mean, we're not like improv where... Yeah, improv super supportive. Very supportive. I, I, yeah. I think in some ways we could be more supportive. I think we could give each other more advice. So I have a yeah. podcast where um, that's called Leading the Blind, where it's all about comics giving each other advice about um, about comedy and about careers, um, partly because like, we just don't talk to each other enough. We don't mentor no. each other yeah. enough. And so I wanted to provide, if we can't do it one-on-one, like let me do it via the podcast. Um, but we're all kind of asperger or most of us are, and whatever. Yeah, and so like part Jimmy of it, yeah, part of it is, is uh, that, because we, our social skills are lacking. And so it's not that we are like, mean people necessarily a lot of us can be very nice in the right context very kind but but you know sometimes it's just we're a lot of people like are too shy and they can seem like bitches whether they're men or women you know but so sometimes when someone's above you in the hierarchy of things they can come off as kind of a jerk or or stuck up or whatever and then it really turns out ah they're shy asperger's whatever socially right. awkward themselves yeah. and they don't know how to interact with you either you know so it, it depends but there is a level of meritocracy to stand up that is unlike most other fields and is as it should be and you Eventually, you're going to get up on stage, you're going to get laughs, or you're not anyway. Um, but there is something fun about being in a world that has that much meritocracy, and especially for um, all these people who have these weird levels of social, uh, you know, skill. Mm-hmm. It's fun to have something where you get to be like, yeah, I might be a dork off stage. I might not be able to do this, the double dutch game of a conversation that involves eight people unnecessarily, you know. But you give me that my turn with the microphone and we'll see who wins. And so it's fun to have something where you are 
good at something and other and you and you win you know even if it shouldn't be a competition um sometimes it kind of is and and so then to get off stage and it's it's hard like every we like shit talking too you know it is fun to shit talk and especially if you all feel like well we're all yeah. in agreement about this guy it's fun to know you know <laughs> i don't know it's not yeah, nice oh no but I mean, life is hard yeah, but I don't know. I mean, how do ha, is there a way that you think it should be more supportive? Um, well, I think I think it should be we should all like uh, I mean, you guys should all pitch in and, and at least get words out there, you know, have people the ones especially the communities you really enjoy like uh at least make a create a solid group where you all support each other. It doesn't have to be the entire community, but at least like a good solid fraction of like La Creme de la Creme get together. Yeah. And, and be like, hey, go see well, his no, show. Well, no, that is something I will say I think that people should do a better job of. And I realize that for me, like I said, this is, it's a, it's a full-time job for me. Yeah. Everything, the you know. The serious should. Yeah, what, even if even you were just talking about social media and, um, and you know promotion stuff yeah. um having a website you know like a lot of people think it's not it's like i think they're afraid of it's not cool or it's too vulnerable it's to like have a good no. no you need to have it and it's annoying when i host a show if i look someone up yeah. whether it's my podcast or my comedy show you know i want to be able to backlink to your stuff i put a lot of time and effort into making things very professional and i don't know if it, some things may never get seen but it's there and if someone looks me up if someone looks the show up i want it to be there and i don't have the time that i'd like to do yeah. more promotion but if i run across a show if it's a show that i like i will like that shit on whatever social media platform mm -hmm. you know it, just say you're going that's another thing when someone invites you to their show on facebook us you know comedians people who are involved in stuff I finally learned, like, I learned for myself, I'm, I'll am i click I'm going to a show that I want to support, even if I'm not going, just to make the numbers look better for for the real that's, that's people who might idea. come. Yeah. You don't you I, don't need to I've, say... I've, I've, I've said I'm going to a couple of your shows, and I really meant to. I just... Well, that's the other thing. Yeah. I don't... The person's not going to, like... I, I, unless the person's an idiot, they're not going to be like, they said they were coming, and they didn't. They're going to either <laughs> say, hey, the person want, meant to come. Right. You'll know and when or, I make the show. I'll definitely Yeah, and or it. the person wanted to make my... Understands... Yeah. Just boost the numbers yeah. for the person and support. It's not like, what are you getting? There are people who I, are on my show who mm -hmm. are performers who don't bother to click going. And if, oh, I, wow. and if I see that person's, you don't click, click going, you don't promote it, you don't put it on your own page at least once. Yeah. I mean, I can't promote every show that I'm on, and I'm also sympathetic to it. that. I'm, I'm on too many shows to like yeah. constantly have that. It'll, it can ruin your algorithms if you promote too much stuff, and we don't want it all to be. And so I'm sympathetic to that, too. We all have to negotiate our relationship with social media. But... Social media People is put so effort. huge nowadays, man. Right. It's, it's big. It sucks. Uh, I'm not a, a big social media guy. I mean, it's I have to be now, but, you know, like I never had a Twitter or all that jazz. Are you on Twitter? Yes, I am, at Poop Tampon. Poop Tampon. Very clever. Hold on. Let yeah. me respond to this. Sure. Um, where can we find you on your podcast? So it's uh, so it's called Leading the Blind, and it is on iTunes, um, Stitcher, basically any of the platforms. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. Rate, review, subscribe. You know. Woo! Thank it's you. really um, it's really been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. Where do you do that? Uh, so uh, e this guy Ethan has a has a studio. It's called mm -hmm. um, Body Tape International, and he has like eight podcasts now that he wow. uh, produces so yeah cool mm -hmm. so leading the blind uh is something to check out like uh, how I, often do you do that we, weekly it comes nice. out every thursday at 4 20 a.m that's Jesus. what he chooses um and i would love for people to come check out my show at the new movement at 9 30 tomorrow yeah. night thursday june 1st like I said, it's five dollars, but there are free drinks. Wink, Woo. wink. We're not allowed to say what those drinks are for legal reasons, but there mm -hmm. are free drinks, um, and prizes, and um, it's a it's a it's a fun mystery box of prizes. We've given out some porn, and uh, a hair dryer, and hmm. yeah, just porn DVDs. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it just it, the prizes come from all all kinds of weird for all kinds of weird reasons, and so um, anyway, it's a, it's a very fun show, and I mean, it's always a good time. It's a, mm. so much fun. The audience loves it. The comics How love it. How long is the show? 
A, a little over an hour, usually. Oh, cool. I am a firm believer that comedy shows should be never longer than an hour and 15 minutes. Mm. It's very frustrating, frustrating to be a headliner on a show when if the show before you with the host and all the comics leading up has already been an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, people's attention spans just do not go. Oh, so yeah. now you're supposed to have the best position. You And now you're, and they, they want you to do 30 minutes or something. And it's like, well, there I've already seen people shift in their seats. A couple of people have already left. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want the headliner to come on when it's hot. You know what I mean? 40 minutes into the show. If, if, if the headliner is doing 30 to 40 minutes, right? 40 minutes into the show, everyone's warmed up. Everyone's having yeah. a good time. Everyone's had is on their second or third drink, you know, depending <laughs> on their levels. Right. That's when the headliner comes on. An hour and ten minutes in the show, you should be wrapping up, and it's very frustrating. So no, I'm uh, at the new moment. It starts at nine thirty, and we are usually out of there by ten forty-five. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Um, yeah. And you said you had something at Cold Town on Cold Friday. Cold Town every every Friday at Cold Town. Uh, there's a show called Live at Cold Town. It's at ten o'clock. I think it's five bucks. Um, it's also BYOB there. Mm -hmm. BYOB at the new moment as well. If yeah. you if you're interested in in more drinks. Um, if you have a preference, if you have a pref, if you have a strong yes. preference yes. for what you're drinking, mm -hmm. Austin, um, yeah, and that's what, though I'm I'm the feature on it this time, but it's also it's just something to check out every week, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I mean, yeah. Thank you for coming. I know I've wanted you on, but uh, I'm so glad you had a great uh, honeymoon. Yeah, I have a friend that goes to Costa Rica all the time. He loves it, so I'm surprised you're back. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not it's, it's not as cheap as as like even Belize. So, really? Yeah, it's oh. not like you can really just chill there for too long. But at least I can't because I make very little money, which I highly recommend to all artists. Yes, yeah, support figure out how to local live artists. On. Yeah, hey, sure. you know, support. Yeah, please yeah. do. I'm gonna start a Patreon thing. I'm gonna talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I gotta I gotta start one as well for. Oh, you haven't started benefit. it. No, I haven't started it yet. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, like I said, I have to get all the details out before I go out. Be like, hey, I'm gonna raise money. Yeah. You know, because I am gonna give a huge portion to the uh, autistic film festival, and I am gonna cool. keep like 25 percent and give the other 25 percent to the Howard Theater where I'll be hosting the 24 Hour gotcha. Podcast. But you know, cool. half half that money goes to. Great. Yeah. Way better than the percentage of our last charity event. Mm -hmm. No, this is this is legit charity. <laughs> this is an actual charity yeah, event. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I'm not. I'm not a greedy person. I'm very. Uh, humble when it comes to money. Um, I, if cool. people need it and I have it, then yeah, you can have it too. Cool. Um, but yeah, so very exciting to have you on, and um, I mean, I wish you the best of luck. I will come to one of your shows. I, I won't be able to go tomorrow, unfortunately, but maybe Friday night I could make it. Cool. Um, do it. Just send me the invites. Will do. Yeah, you're the best. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, no, thank you, Ariel. You got a beautiful name, by the way. Thanks, and, uh, Wayne's congratulations. okay. Yeah, media career best. We're rare breed. Um, <laughs> Fashion's cool. My name means wagon maker cow herder. It's not that cool. Right. You know, Good point. I was rich once. No. <laughs> Your ancestors? Yeah, they, they were they had rich a cow cows. business. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cows are very expensive. Uh, they, they made most of their money on mushrooms, but, you know, cows oh. are there. Okay. Nice. All right, guys. Well, it's been a good, solid hour and 12. So uh, I'm going to cut it there. And I thank you all for listening. Uh, please go visit her on uh, arielnorman.com. Boom. Say it again. Arielnorman.com. Yeah, just look a her up. A R I E L L E. Perfect. <laughs> all right. And, and poop uh, tampon. Sorry. <laughs> poop tampon on Twitter. Yeah. You got an Instagram? Do it. S uh, at self aware What is it? Self aware ale. Self aware ale. That's really creative. Thanks. I like it. All right. Well, Overshareal.com also works for my website. <laughs> what is it? Overshareal.com. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. And Fox Men's Radio out. And so this is like a little extra uh, I do for YouTube uh, for people that are still listening. Oh, ooh, ooh, behind. Yeah, the, oh, that's extra. right. I always do a little, little segment, little segment. Um, for the hardcore fans. Yeah. Uh, so you left Mormonism. When did you do that and why? Well, I mean, I kind of understand why, but... <laughs> well, no, I mean, it would actually... Uh, when I was... When I went to college, I I think I went once or twice to church because I didn't even have a car, so mm -hmm. I was, like, having to get a ride from someone. And then I just pretty much stopped going. But my plan was always that I would repent, uh, eventually go back to church and everything, but I wanted to kind of 
you know, live my life in college for a while, like enjoy my freedom. Um, but I believed in the church uh, very much growing mm. up. And then it transitioned to a point of, of more, like, so even when I knew I was gay and everything, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you're gay. If your eternity is determined by this life, then, I mean, who cares if, if you, you know, can't be happy for 80 years if you are talking about your entire, you know, eternity. You're trying to get to the celestial kingdom and all this kind of stuff yeah. from Mormonism. And so... Um, and so I still believe the church was true. So it didn't really matter that I was gay. You know, I was going to, my plan was to marry a man and, and I, uh, I was planning on finding a dude who I was attracted enough to, I mean, everybody's, especially women are all kind of bi, even if it's only a small amount. So it was just like, right. I find a guy, I was like, I really only was like falling in love or having crushes on girls, but I was going to find a guy who I thought was cute, who at least thought it was hot that I was really a lesbian, who I was never going to, people would be like, so you'd marry a gay guy? No. Um, yeah, screw, I don't want, I want the, I'm just too selfish. I was like, I want the guy to be attracted to me, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll fuck him, whatever, you know? And so. Have you had sex with the guy? No. Wow. <laughs> no. Good on you. Yeah. Gold I've, star. I've met a, met a couple of lesbians that I've. It's not that many of us pure with, breeds, yeah. but yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm pure bloody. Yeah. Uncontaminated. <laughs> um. <laughs> By jizz. Although one day I'm going to have to jump jizz into my vagina. Because oh, I'm that was babies. something I wanted to bring up too. Yes. yes. That is something that you plan on? That's yes. That's awesome. Um, but just to finish the Mormon thing. So basically, <laughs> um, uh, basically, I got to the point where I was more just afraid that it was true. Yeah. And then I started, I got to the point where I'd read enough books where I was like, Okay, this is a human invention. I, you know, I had to, it, but it was, it was a lot. I mean, it was very intense to be able to leave a religion. And I still, like, especially if I'm in my parents' home, um, you know, where I lived from 13 to 17 and a half, mm -hmm. um, I still, like, my brain gets back into, like, a weird Mormon um, circuitry. And it, it's not, I can't be there for very long, honestly, because it's, wow. I start to get some, yeah, some Mormon PTSD type stuff. I used to, I haven't, I don't have them too often anymore, but you like. You never went on a mission, did you? No. I, I, I might have if I had stayed, but, mm -hmm. um, it was something I promised God I would do at one point. Um, but, uh, yeah, like in the Book of Mormon musical, there's uh, a song number called Spooky Mormon it. Hell Dreams. I want to see it so bad. Well, it's like, that's a very real thing, the Spooky Mormon Hell Dreams, and I don't have them too often anymore, but I used to have wow. them, uh, just it would it, my biggest fear is like I murder someone one day and then I or like I would have these dreams where I would basically with like the Saint Peter type thing with the clipboard would greet me and and I would be he'd be like oh you're dead and I'm like oh wow and he'd be like well you're not going to the celestial kingdom which is the top one and he'd be like and you're not going to the <laughs> terrestrial kingdom anyway and then basically it would be like you're one of the seven people who's going to outer darkness or something it just it's hard to explain without if you yeah, don't but I don't really know but just, that much just about, like I read annoying, the first book of Nephi woo oh, but just like annoying, annoying uh, you know Mormon we've had missionaries PTSD. come to the house they were like pretty regular for a while and yeah. I went to a bishop's house and cooked food for them and stuff yeah, yeah. I don't I, I like to dabble in religion yeah um, but it's you an believe in God religion. right um, yeah in a certain way yeah same here not, not, I'm not huge in, I, I believe I, that I believe we're all God but, yes yeah. um, sort of a, a thing where I think mm -hmm. that well, I actually know the meaning of the universe, and so I don't want to, like, spoil it for a lot of people who mm -hmm. um, might not be ready for that. Um, so I won't get into that. It's, cause it's, not, it's, a, it's something that you're not supposed to know. Kind of the part of the point of life is you're not really supposed to know the answer, but, like, I needed to know, and, and I, was, I was interested in that spiritual journey and the drugs and stuff that leads you to there. But I don't want to spoil it yeah, for other people, cool. so I won't go into sure. it. But, um, yeah, I believe you. Um, but with Mormonism, yeah, like, like I, uh, like I, I read enough books, like I said, and I got to the point where I, it, but it took a lot, it took a lot of work, um, to be able to be okay with, like, I had to like learn how to be okay with taking the Lord's name in vain, which I now have kind of gone back wow. around to trying not to do as much, um, for various reasons. But that was something where I felt like this in, this huge thing inside of like ooh, if I would even say oh my god or something or sing along with a lyric in a song yeah um but yeah it took a lot of work what was the other oh having babies yeah um, are you and your wife both gonna have babies that's or the plan I mean if we can wow. if we if it takes you know what I mean I don't know if our shriveled lesbian uteruses are gonna work but oh uh, gonna have knows. like quadruple yeah we'll <laughs> you're gonna see. have a litter of kids each of you well that happens if you like take the take the hormones or yeah. whatever so that but hope it would be nice if so that you're gonna flip through a catalog like 
Yes. No, a sperm is very expensive. I did that with my ex-wife. That was the plan, and we had chosen a sperm donor that we were pretty sure. Oh, you were married once before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not talking about that. Well, that's fine. I left her four days later after the wedding. I was like, I'm not in love with you. I'm in love with Katie. So um, mm-hmm. that's a whole other story. Yeah, let's not get into that. If you want to hear about it, you can hear about it on the Storyfellers podcast with Pat, D- Pat Dean. Oh. Um, even there, I was only able to tell like 60% of the story that I wanted to. <laughs> just gonna have to follow my comedy career it's a really good story um but yeah so we have a short list of guys who have 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 kind of volunteered um (laughs) we're looking for someone basically i mean of course we need them to be healthy and have a a, have a healthy family history um that's the first thing you also need to be you know he has to be willing to sign away all of his rights um, get get STD tested regularly throughout yeah. the, the the years that this is involved, and then he has to be willing to come to our apartment um, whenever we're ovulating. You know, so first when Katie's ovulating, and so there's three days in, in a three days yeah. in a row in a month where you basically have the highest chance of getting pregnant. Now, oh, when, if you have intercourse um, on those days, on average, um, you there's about a 33 percent chance each of those days of getting pregnant. If you use a, um, like the turkey baster method, basically a syringe type thing, um, it goes down to about a 7% chance. So this guy has to be willing to come, jack off in the restroom, leave, and do that three days in a row, or, or at least one or two if you can't, oh, you can't whatever. Oh, guys. We can... <laughs> yeah, but it's a schedule. There's a there's a very real schedule dynamic mm-hmm. to that, and it's kind of awkward. Um, and so yeah. he's got to be willing to do that. And like I said, get tested regularly throughout this. Sure. We can't be dumping, you know, uh, diseasey sperm into our vaginas and stuff. Diseasey jizzy. Diseasey jizzy. Yeah, Gross. we can't have yeah. AIDSy jizz um, or any clam jizz or whatever. So, so he's got to be willing to do that. For as many months as it takes, with that 7% chance on average each time, at, for Katie to get pregnant, and then turn around a year and a half, two years later, and start that same process So she's going to go first? Well, she's a year and a half older. Um, oh, okay. She looks several years younger. But yeah. I've seen pictures. She's beautiful. She You're both beautiful. are very but, Yeah, but she's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I, and the thing is, like, sometimes people are like, well, why don't you just get one of your friends? It's like, if you get someone who's, like, a close friend... There's, gets weird. there's an Ariel who's painted a painting on your wall. Ariel Baby? Yeah, she was a... a Spells it right. Yeah. She was a uh, person sitting on the corner of Congress with art. And mm. I fell in love with that piece, so I bought it. Cool. It's, uh, Hello, it's supposed to, uh, I guess, uh, symbolize all the awful things in humanity. Yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um... So, uh, what we're saying? So she's gonna. We're gonna try to have her go first, and mm-hmm. then and then we'll try to get me pregnant yeah. afterwards. When do you plan on tr- attempting this? Pretty soon. Really? Well, you know, the thing is, it also might take a long time. She's thirty-two, mm-hmm. and I'm thirty, yeah. and um, I mean, it could happen the first time we try it. There's about a seven percent chance, oh, when we don't know on average, right? Because we don't know how fertile either of us is. Um, we both have some real fears about our fertility. Um, really? Yeah. Well, as you get older, it gets harder. It's already yeah. we're already past our peaks, um, but also, I don't know. She's got her own issues. I've got. I've been told by doctors that it, I may need to be on hormones um, to get pregnant because I do have a higher level of testosterone than the average woman. Okay. Um, my ratio of you know the progesterone to estrogen or whatever the fuck. What is, is that? The, the hand test. Yeah, the hand test. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah, tell depending on which finger. Is, yeah. Uh, Longer than yeah, your you know. uh, ring finger, you have more testosterone. I think yeah, isn't that yeah. true for most people though? I don't know. I'll I don't ha- know. Well, I'll have to check out some other women and see. Okay. Um, I've, I've I've seen women that are either equal or less, but I've seen women that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Let's, I don't know. Let's uh, you know. Let's get our let's get ourselves tested. Mythbusters. I, I yeah. I let's think everyone should know how much that. testosterone they have. It's a, it's the thing. I think you, it's like a hundred bucks or something, but you can get it tested. There's really? they'll send you I don't even know what, mail. what type I am, let alone how much testosterone I have. Oh, I'm a minus. Really? That. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mosquitoes love it. It's very Ooh. important. Um, but yeah, want to have some babies. So, oh, so I was gonna say, so healthy, mm-hmm. and then of course, you know, it's like you want the guy to be smart, funny, cool, whatever, in whatever way is like a, a, a yeah. person who's a, who you like, and then um, the two things that are like are specific and I care about these more than she does but 
are the two things that are specific physical penis things size. that I care about. Penis size, of course. Um, so three, you're right. Um, is curly hair because I love her curly hair so much. Okay. And I just, ugh, I just really want little curly haired kids. Um, so curly hair, and mm. then she has hazel eyes, and I have this kind of bluish green situation. Yeah. Um, and so I would really like someone who's either got blue green or hazel something where Those we can. Eyes kind are of super have, important to me as well. Yeah, I really, I just, yeah. you don't know. I, I would, I would literally give my left arm for us to be able to make a baby together genetically. And the scientists are working on it, but I don't know if the timing's going to work. But if you are listening and you're a mm -hmm. scientist, please work on this. Um, yeah. Because I'm so in love with her. And, like, I, it's such a miracle, the idea that the person, you and the person you're in love with, could make a baby together that's half of each of you I like I can't like the fact that straight people take that for granted and like I have to listen to so many comedians get up on stage and just be like ha 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 of course I never want any kids ha 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 of course I'll abort anything that ever happens inside of me yeah. and it kills me because I would just I, I literally would give my left arm my that's left good to know. arm because I, uh, I always think about you know when same sex same, same sex couples get together and they don't want to have kids I'm just like well there goes your entire bloodline like you're killing well i guess so many you know, I mean, or a heterosexual couple so many of them yeah, yeah it's very abortive it's very like suicidal to me mm. like the idea of not wanting to have kids but i mean thank god i mean i wish i wish most people didn't want to have kids most well, yeah. people suck and also sure. there's too many people There's like so i would many people. love it but unfortunately it's <laughs> I, yeah, I have jokes about this because i think it's funny that yeah. um i've heard a lot of liberals say well you know what it's mostly like it's, there's so many old people who are voting and they're all racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, whatever. They're not progressive. So once they die, they're, uh, it'll be so much easier to pass all our, our liberal reforms because all, it's all these old people who are the problem. But these are really the same people who are like, I don't want to have any kids. I will abort anything. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, guess who is having children? Um, conservative you know, Christians, yeah. Muslims, Mormons, rural, you know, rural, Christian, whatever. The most conservative people. Those Catholics. are the people who are still having children. <laughs> yeah. So good luck in a couple of generations For with sure. all the shit that you want to pass. And then I'm like, <laughs> well, I really like saying this on stage. Like, alternately, if you are anti-abortion, you know, if you are pro-life, guess who's having abortions? Mostly liberals. Yeah. So just turn a blind eye for a couple of generations for the greater good. Let the liberals kill their babies. The Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's something where, like, I think it's crazy that people take that for granted. Um, but again, I wish, I, I think if you don't want to have kids, you really shouldn't have kids. It's an enormous mm -hmm. undertaking. It will ruin your life in a lot of ways. I'm terrified about it for my own life, but it's just something I desperately want and I've always wanted. Um, and... Yeah, but I would, I wouldn't kill, but I would give my left arm for yeah. the ability to smush our genes together because I, I don't get how people aren't narcissistic enough to even want their own genes like in a little kid. I mean, that's amazing. But yeah. then when you're in love, if, when you're really in love, like the thought of being able to make a smush up, a, a mashup yes, of please. the two of you, yeah. and then you get to raise this little nugget and just... <laughs> act, well, I'm sure you and her are going to be great mothers. We are. That's, yeah. Well, she's going to be a great mom. I'm going to be a great parent. <laughs> I, just, I just don't have a lot of maternal instincts, but I'm sure they'll oh come out. Oh, my God. Once, you, once you know, she's had hers and then you get yours, you're, I mean. Oh, no. I'm going to love hers more than mine, probably. I, oh, I shouldn't geez. say that. I'm sure I'll love them both equally, <laughs> but, like, so I'm, I'm right more here. worried, if anything, <laughs> about, about my maternal instincts towards mine. Hers, I mean, yeah. whatever comes out of her is going to be so perfect. Oh, I'm I'm so I I'm jealous of the love that you have right you now. You should so be. I'm super jealous. Yeah. Everyone should have this kind yeah. of love. Um, how'd y'all meet? We met in college actually, oh, almost twelve years ago. For? Um, psychology. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm using that degree. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've never I mean, officially used. You definitely it. manipulate mass That's amounts true. of people. That's true. Uh, in in any which direction, you can yeah. make them feel whatever you want them to feel. That's true. But you choose to make them laugh, which is great. It's yeah. a good healing experience. Mm -hmm. I love laughing. I hope, I like to think that I'm also making them think. Um, it's mm -hmm. very, comedy, doing comedy is very meaningful to me. And I don't, uh, there's people who are like, yeah, it's just all about being funny. That's all, that's no. all that we're doing is we're just telling. And I'm like, no, I mean, I'm specifically, 
what what I love about this, why it's meaningful to me, is that is to be thought provoking. That's what I got out of George Carlin and Bill Hicks and Chris Rock all those years ago. Yeah. It changed my life as this Mormon kid who was just starting to really question things. And so when people are like, "Don't take it too seriously," we're just here making people laugh. It's like that. You don't have to, you know, if you think it's too self-important to think that we're changing the world. Fine. I mean, and there's comics I love who are not challenging, who make me laugh, and that is very valuable. But what I'm doing this for, what I love, what's meaningful to me, is making people think, you know. And mm. you do that by opening their brains up with the laughter, you know. You get, and, and, it, and it excuses things, like that you wouldn't have, someone could make a political argument that, you know, there's things that George Carlin said, whether it was about abortion or religion or whatever, where if he had just said them, if he just given his opinion, I wouldn't have been receptive to it. But because he's making me laugh, there's something different about yeah. that that opens you, you up. And it's if people are leaving the, the show and they're talking to each other in the car ride home about the things that we talked about, I mean, Success. that's crazy awesome to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about Carlin is he would – I mean, he, he was funny, but he wasn't that funny. He had a great – opinion about everything that's what made him yeah. so great yeah i mean i listen to him daily yeah um you know i i always i love uh Rodney Dage. my favorite thing if i was going to do comedy and this is something i would definitely have to write for one-liners i yeah. love a series of one-liners and you know rodney dangerfield Mitch have Hedberg. you ever seen there's a comic in austin rob gagnon he has a character called gay rodney dangerfield that he does oh my god it's so funny really you should come uh, out yeah. he also has a show every tuesday at the new movement at that starts at 9 30 it's right after there's an eight o'clock open mic on tuesdays it's yes. a booked open mic and that's a fun time yeah. it's because I've done it, that a couple times. it's themed right so it's mm -hmm. um you're always doing new material you're supposed right. to only do brand new material so it's very fun mm -hmm. the comics from across the spectrum of you know skill level and uh, and everything are um do that mic um but it's all new material and so it's very fun the audience members who come always have a great time and i yeah. would recommend that as an i don't recommend going to open mic specifically to a lot of it's very often but that open mic i, I would recommend and I like then going to open mics i like seeing people yeah but you I always like, like doing like comedy yeah, yeah. i mean for like non you know yeah. non performer people like if you want to have a good time it's byob it's free yeah. come you know if you need something yeah. to do on a tuesday night the parking's free along along there so yeah. there's a lot of parking on 7th um or on the vodka, rather. Um, and so, but then right after the 8 o'clock show, there's a show at 9 and 30 called The Sandbox, which Rob Gagnon hosts. And it's, it's this weird experimental I show. I think I know who he is. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Taller guy, right? Yeah, he's taller. Yeah. And you, yeah. people just do weird stuff. Yeah, they they yeah. have to do weird, wacky, like, non-stand-up. But, like, comics Does he have doing non-stuff. Sometimes his girlfriend is the co-host, Ariel yeah. Greenspan. Um, but he's really built it, so it's almost always a completely packed house. Yeah, so yeah. it's actually yeah, I definitely convenient. know who he is. And he gives yeah. out like weird snack prizes and stuff. He's, mm -hmm. he's very fun, but so he does this gay he, Rodney Dangerfield. But I, he probably won't do it that often because he doesn't yeah. really do stand up at that show very much. Yeah. But well, I, I'd like to pull him aside. And say, hey. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, but also yeah, if you see his mm -hmm. if you see his name on a on a lineup on some yeah. Facebook ad or whatever. Go check it out. Not that he always does gay right, but it's one of his, yeah, you know, great bits that he will pull out pretty often. That's so. pretty cool. Anyway. Um, see, I'm supportive. I'm supportive of good stuff. See, that's, that's what the I thing. Want. I won't support yeah. bad stuff, right, you know, I but tell. I will support. Yeah. I support comedy that I love because, mm -hmm. of course, I mean, I want great things for Austin comedy. Oh. Yeah. Well. Uh, I should probably go. Yeah. Yeah. This is. But this has been fun. Yeah, I'm so glad you showed up, and uh, thanks for everyone that listened to the extra bonus stuff. It was a good 20 minutes of extra material, uh, of, of like. Uh, it's hard to stop material. me from yeah. talking. No, no, no. I, I, like I said, I've had people sit here and talk for like two and a half hours before. Yeah. And I throw this up uncut, so people are like, "Oh, it's too long." I'm like, "Fucking, you can jump ahead if you know." There's yeah, a lot great. of good content, man. Uh, well, thank you so much again, and this is actually the. You know, goodbye for today. I actually might have a guest come on tonight. I just had someone message me about it. But, yeah. So, thank you so much, Ariel. And you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks. You too. All right. Fox Bye. Minus out. Bye.